Today you're going to continue to solve absolute value equations, but we'll be using a scavenger hunt to do this. I did include a couple of examples in this video that are from the scavenger hunt that you can reference if you need some help. So the first one I wanted to look at is B. So if you want, you can start with B, you could start with A, you can start wherever you want in the scavenger hunt. But I want to remind you that when we solve absolute value equations, we want to make sure that we isolate the absolute value. So I would like to move things around so that this absolute value of m minus 2 is the only thing on the left side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And that gives me the absolute value of m minus 2 is equal to... To five. Now remember, as soon as you have the absolute value as the only thing on the left-hand side, you're ready to think about what the two equations would be if you even have two answers. So in this case, we do have two answers because an absolute value can equal a positive number, being the five. So our two equations would be that what's inside there, so the m minus two, that could be five. Or that could be negative 5. And so then these are the two equations we solve. So in this top one, I add 2 to both sides. I'm kind of running out of room here. And we get m equals 7. And then down here, again, we add 2. And we get that m would be negative 3. And so then when we write that as a set, it would be the negative 3 first followed by the 7. Now the next one we're going to look at is not necessarily the answer, but I wanted to look at C because C has a little bit more going on. So once again, I need to get rid of anything that's not inside this absolute value before I break it up into its two parts. So here we're going to add 9 first. That gives me 3 times the absolute value of 7C minus 7 equals 21 and then I'll divide by 3. Now the trap here is is that you might want to distribute. So just remember you can't distribute into an absolute value. So this will give us the absolute value of 7c minus 7 is equal to 7 and now I can break it up into 2. So I will have two answers here because absolute value could equal positive 7. So we're going to have 7c minus 7 could be 7, or 7c minus 7 could be negative 7. So add 7 to both sides here. We get 7c could be 14, and then I'll divide by 7, so 2 is an answer. Here, add 7. I get 7c could be 0, divide by 7, and c would be 0. So here are the two answers, and then in that set notation, it would be 0, comma 2. The next one is G. So I picked G because of this three-fifths fraction out front. We'll start this the same way. I'll subtract 8 on both sides. That will give me three-fifths times the absolute value of 10 minus 5x equals 21. And then I'm going to write this, this next piece up here. So when you see this, we want to get rid of that 5. We don't want that denominator there. So I will multiply both sides by 5. But I do want to let you know that I would be allowed to write this in this way. And when I do that, it might be a little bit more obvious to you that multiplying by 5 does in fact make sense so that I could get rid of those. So this will be 3 times the absolute value of 10 minus 5x equals 105, and then I can divide by 3. So that would be the absolute value of 10 minus 5x equals 35. And now we're ready to break it apart into 2. So that 10 minus 5x could be 35 or 10 minus 5x could be negative 35. So when I solve here, I'll get negative 5x equals 25, and x could be negative 5. Here we get negative 5x equals 
negative 45 and x would be 9. So then the answer as a set would be negative 5 comma 9. And the last one here is k. So for k, I picked this one because um, it's very common to make a mistake when you have a negative sign in front. So let me just remind you that the very first step is always to get this absolute value all by itself on the left. So I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides first. And the negative is still here. So it's the opposite of the absolute value of 3k plus 6 equals negative 9. And then this negative, remember, is just like an implied 1. And so now I'll divide by negative 1. And that will give me the absolute value of 3k plus 6 equals positive 9. So that's good that it turned to be positive because if it would have stayed negative 9, we wouldn't have an answer. So here the two possibilities are 3k plus 6 could be 9 or 3k plus 6 could be negative 9. Subtracting 6, 3k is 3, divide by 3, k could be 1. And then over here, same thing, subtract 6, divide by 3. So the two answers are negative 5 and 1. I hope this helps as you work your way through the scavenger hunt.